Hi, right. hello, my name is Alex Binder and I'm a graduating student from the Galvanized Data Science Program. Today I'm going to be talking about my project, um, which uses scientific literature to classify mutations in tumors. Uh, the technological advances around genetic sequencing in the last 20 years make personalized treatments a profound next step in medicine. Uh, when it comes to cancer, determining which genetic mutations contribute to, the, to cancer's development and which ones are neutral and more just along for the ride is vital to the application of these personalized treatments. However, currently this process requires pathologists to manually review thousands of mutations um, manually by looking through the scientific literature. This is a long and intense process. Therefore, my goal is to use natural language processing and machine learning to build a classification model that looks at the research literature and classifies individual mutations within the tumor for us. So for example, uh, here we have the, uh, an example of the gene CBL and in the 399th position of that, the amino acid that should be coded is leucine. But after this specific mutation, the valine amino acid is coded. The model then goes and looks at the scientific literature um, surrounding this specific mutation and then spits out a classification. In this case, it'd be a loss of function mutation classification. So a data set uh, to do this was obtained from the Memor Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and it contained over 3,300 sequence mutations representing nine classes of mutations, as well as the textual literature describing the mutations. Uh, three of the classes didn't um, fit into my project and I excluded them. So after pre-processing, I was left with 3,171 values that were classified into the six distinct remaining classes. And those classes are the likely loss of function, the likely gain of function, confirmed loss of function, likely neutral, inconclusive, and then confirmed gain of function. And then just as a note um, in my figures for the rest of the talk, I'll use the LOF and GOF acronyms to represent loss and gains of function. So I applied a random forest uh, classification model to the entire data set in all six classifications and achieved an accuracy of nearly 70%, uh, which is pretty good for an NLP model. Uh, first, we'll look at the confusion matrix on the left side there. Um, and that diagonal that runs from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right. Uh, represents where the model predictions are correct. So you can see that that's the large majority of um, where the model made its predictions are falling on that diagonal. So that's what we want to see. The model, however, was not perfect. And there were a couple of areas where it struggled. The first is when differentiating the confirmed loss of function and the likely loss of function categories. Those are highlighted here with the gold circles. Um, the other area where it struggled a bit was differentiating the confirmed gain of function and the likely gain of function classifications here highlighted with the white. Uh, this actually makes a lot of sense and we'd expect to see this because um, the likely loss of function, the confirmed loss of function, as well as for the gain of function, um, these are where the, the differences in the, the classifications are the most subtle. So this is exactly where I'd expect this model to struggle the most. And it's encouraging that we see that. Over on the right side, we have a Gini impurity graph that shows the most important words in this classification model. And there's just a couple things I'd like to point out here. Um, the first is that in these top 15 words, we have uh, three forms of the word activate. This is important in cancer because when you're talking about genes that are involved specifically in growth and development, if those get overactivated or overstimulated and out of control, that's one way cancer can develop. The other word here that uh, jumps out at me is the word suppressor. Tumor suppressor genes are also very important in preventing cancer. They're the genes that check and control our cell growth and division. So when those get mutated and we lose those, cancer also is likely to develop. I mentioned that there are a couple of places where the model didn't do as well. And I picked out a more specific look at um, the likely loss of function and loss of, confirmed loss of function classes. Um, and I have just a much smaller confusion matrix. And you can see that the accuracy of this model increases about 10 points when you strip away all the other categories. Um, and then on the, in the more black, dark blue boxes there that are in the top right and the lower left-hand corners, you can see that where the, where the, where the model is misclassifying, it, those tend to be fairly balanced. So I'm, I'm fairly encouraged by this specific model. Over on the right, we see the um, most important words for this model. Just a couple things to point out here. One is the word inactive is on top. When we have a loss of function mutation, what that means is that the protein that codes from that gene can no longer provide, uh, can no longer perform its function, right? So hence loss of function. That makes that gene inactive. So seeing that word there at the top is very encouraging for this model. The other thing I want to point out is P10. Um, it's about what the sixth word there, and that's not 
that's not a typo, that's actually a gene. Um, and that is a gene that is a tum known tumor suppressor gene. And when that gets um, knocked out or mutated, that's been associated with several forms of cancer, including glioblastoma, lung cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer. That's where I'm at for now, but I have many next steps and ways to take this forward. Uh, there were several words in there that I wanna dive into a little bit more and understand why those were the top words from the model. I wanna focus farther in on the impact of the mutations by reclassifying them to whether or not they are cancer causing. And finally, I'd like to be able to apply this model to other literature that wasn't necessarily included within this data set. I use a standard Python tech stack with standard Python libraries focusing on uh, NLTK and scikit-learn to build my models. And with that, uh, uh, that's my presentation. <laughs>